Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Coming off a nice little Thursday, um, NBA opening day was great. We went 4-1, and one, almost all plus money, too. Uh, bet of the day was Cubs plus 120 that hit. We hit the White Sox as a dog. Parlay of the day hit. was a great MLB day. NBA, there was only two games on, and we, we split. We went 1-1. One one. Let's put it in the past. We got 13 NBA games on tonight, but I only have bets for five with a possible six. So I'm not going through all of them. I'm skipping a bunch. Let's get into it. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Hey, get the sauce. First up, Oklahoma City on the road in Indiana, 7 p.m. start. Total opens up at 235, and this line opens up Indiana plus four. Public is all over Oklahoma City. Everyone's betting the thunder here, and the line moves the other way. We're now looking at Indiana plus two and a half. So let's take a quick look at our spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Pacers minus 2.66. So we're looking at a five point lean on Indiana here. So I know laying points on the road with the Oklahoma City Thunder without SGA, because Gilgis Alexander is out. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. OKC is actually six and seven in the 13 games they played without them this year. And get this, of those 13 games, only five of them have been against teams with a below 500 record. Their record in those five, four and one. So Oklahoma City has been beating the teams they're supposed to be even without SGA on the floor. Pacers are definitely a below 500 team, a team that OKC should definitely be even without SGA. And Tyrese Halliburton is out, their best player, which, which makes the matchup even juicier. Indiana's outside shooting takes a dive without Halliburton on the floor. You can see it clear as day in the numbers. Not only is he a great outside shooter himself, but he's arguably the best facilitator in the NBA. So the Pacers lose a great outside shooter and they lose the dude who gets the other outside shooters their looks. The reason I mention that is that's OKC's biggest weakness, defending the three-point shot. That's their biggest weakness right now. Look at this graphic here. In the last five games, 30th in the NBA against above the break three-point shots. In the last 10 games, 29. Not to mention Oklahoma City sitting in the 10 spot trying to hold off the Mavericks for that last uh, spot in the play-in tournament. Indiana's pretty much mathematically eliminated. So just more to play for on the side of the Thunder. I'm laying the points. I know it's square as hell. Give me OKC. So let's head over to Odd Jam, see if we can steal some value here. And it looks like our best bet is going to be OKC minus one and a half at minus 115 on bet MGM. The slime movement is terrifying, but I'm doing it. Give me the Thunder next game. Update. So about 45 minutes after I recorded that, this dropped. SGA is now listed as questionable. He was listed as out. So that's an upgrade. Um, line is back up to four. The crazy part is I, when I saw that he was listed as questionable, I got this bet down uh, for $300, which is 1.2 units for me. And then I went to tweet it out and tell everyone to take it. And it already was up to three and a half and it's four now. Um, if SGA plays, I would still lay the four. Next up's Magic at Wizards. I'm skipping this one. I don't know how to read this Wizards team right now. I mean, a week ago, it looked like they were giving up on the season, but then they win two out of three, including a blowout win over Boston. And this happens without Kuzma and Bradley Beal. So I, I don't know. Orlando looks pretty good. I guess I would lean them, but I'm just going to pass. Toronto on the road in Philly. Another 7 p.m. start. This total opens up at 225, and this line opens up Philly minus six and a half. Line drops a point. We're now looking at Philly. Philadelphia minus five and a half. Public definitely on Toronto, but the Sharps look to be slightly leaning towards Philly here. Let's take a look at our spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Philadelphia minus 1.23. So we're looking at a four point lean on the wraps here. So it looks like the Sixers are going to roll out their normal starting lineup tonight with Harden and Embiid. Um, the thing is, they're two and a half games out of Boston for the two seed, right? And they're two and a half games above Cleveland, <laughs> who's in the four seed. So I don't know how motivated they are to go out and win this game, to be honest. On the other hand, you got Toronto, who's in a deadlock battle for the eight and nine spot with the Hawks. They need this game. The thing is, if Philly's rolling out their starters, Toronto just cannot hang with them. I mean, Toronto cannot stop that offense at all. The Raps defense has really been struggling against short mid-range shots in the last five to 10 games. I know that's really specific, but the reason I bring that up is that's Joel Embiid. He's automatic from 12 feet. And Philly's defense really took a step up after the all-star break. The thing is, in the last four or five games, it's fallen off a bit. Um, they've been resting guys. I don't know if the motivation's really there. They're kind of locked into the three seed. But keep in mind, Joel Embiid is in the MVP race. And as much as that doesn't matter as far as winning a championship, we all know that team, that organization really wants Embiid to win the MVP. So I can't imagine if he starts, he's going to play serious minutes. He'll play 25, 30 minutes at least. So this is what I'm going to do for this game. Um, I can't take the Raptors because they just, at this short line in Philadelphia, they just can't match up. But I'm uncomfortable laying the big number in the full game. So... 
I'm taking Philly in the first half only. I feel like that's the smartest bet to make. So let's head over to Odds Jam to maximize our value here. We click on the Sixers game, then we click the drop down and go down to first half point spread. And it looks like our best bet's gonna be Philly first half minus two and a half, minus 110 on either DraftKings or Bet365. Lock it in, next game. Next up, Bulls at Hornets, skipping. Too many question marks. I'm gonna touch in any Hornets games next. Jazz at Celtics, marketing is officially ruled out. It looks like the Jazz are just hanging it up for the season, not touching it. 13 and a half point line, next. Atlanta Hawks on the road in Brooklyn, 7.30 p.m. start. This total opens up at 242. Line opens up as a pick -em. This line's been moving. It moved to Brooklyn minus one. Now we're looking at Brooklyn plus one and a half. So it moved two and a half points. Does that mean DeAndre Hunter is gonna play? He's listed as questionable. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, public's pretty split even. Sharp money definitely on Brooklyn. So let's take a look at our spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Brooklyn plus 3.23. So about point and a half, two point lean on the Hawks. Meaningful game on both sides here. As I've already mentioned, the Hawks are battling the Raptors. I think they're dead tied. Yeah, they're dead tied right now for the eight and the nine. And there's a huge difference between the eight and the nine. Eight, you get two chances to win a game to get in. Nine, you have to win two games in a row to get in. And the Nets are playing meaningful basketball too. Yeah, they're up a game and a half on the Heat now for the sixth seed, but Miami's got Orlando, Detroit, Washington. Miami could easily finish out the season four and one or even five and oh. So the Nets need a couple more wins to secure that sixth seed. It's not over. As I said earlier, DeAndre Hunter questionable for the Hawks. He hasn't really had the best year, at least what they were expecting out of him. That being said, he's still the most important defensive piece on the perimeter for that team. And especially important in this matchup, because that's most likely who's going to be guarding Mikel Bridges. Matchup wise, the Brooklyn Nets have really been struggling to stop the three point shot. Here's the good news. Atlanta doesn't shoot any threes in the last five games. I think they're 28th or something. The last 10 games, 29th and above the break threes. Trey Young's really the only player on the, on the team that'll shoot a three from above the break. Atlanta takes a large majority of their shots at the rim, which is a terrible matchup because Brooklyn's been one of the strongest teams in the NBA protecting the basket. On the offensive side, Brooklyn's gonna get their looks from outside. The Hawks have been pretty bad at defending the three. That being said, the Nets three point volume has really decreased over the last handful of games. If I was recording this a week and a half, two weeks ago, I'd be like, oh, Nets are gonna splash on this Hawks team. The Nets haven't really been hitting their threes like that. So, I mean, I think this is a good spot for them to jump out of that three point slump. But as of late, the Nets have not been as good as we expect to see them from three. Doesn't matter though, I still love the matchup of the Nets defense against the Hawks offense. So I'm taking Brooklyn here, even with the weird line movement, give me the Nets. So let's head over to Odds Jam, see the smartest bet to make here. And it looks like our best bet on Brooklyn is gonna be Brooklyn plus one and a half at minus 105 on DraftKings. Let's lock that in, next game. Update, DeAndre Hunter is now ruled out, but it doesn't look like the line moved. Um, I waited about 10 minutes, still no movement. So maybe um, people were expecting him not to play. Uh, still on the Nets, doesn't change anything for me. Next up would be Knicks at Cavs. I'm not touching this game because I have no idea what the Knicks look like without Julius Randle. The Knicks have played 77 games. Julius Randle has played 77 games. He started every single game. So I just don't have enough data here. Skip. Clippers on the road in Memphis for the rematch. This is an 8 p.m. start. Total opens up up at 242 in this line. Opens up Memphis minus six and a half. Line doesn't move at all. We're still looking at Memphis minus six and a half as of now. And the reason I say as of now is because the public's pretty decisively leaning towards the Grizzlies. So we'll have to keep an eye on it to see if this touches seven. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Memphis minus 2.64 that's a pretty significant lean on the Clippers they've been playing well lately so that's about a four point lean on the Clippers. so as we know Clippers came into Memphis the other night and beat up on the Grizzlies that being said Jaron Jackson Jr is back that's the best player on the team he didn't play the other night Desmond Bain is back one of the most important players on the team he didn't play the other night coming off a rare home loss with both of those guys back and well rested against a Clippers team with Ka that has Kawhi questionable by the way Kawhi Leonard might not even play definitely laying the points here. Give me Memphis all the way. Next up would be Pistons at Rockets, but I don't feel comfortable betting any Detroit Pistons game from now to the end of the season. I haven't bet a Pistons game in a couple weeks. The team's too weird, too many injuries, too many question marks. Next, Lakers on the road in Minnesota. This might be the game of the night right here. 8 p.m. start, total opens up at 232. Line opens up Minnesota minus one. Public was definitely on the Lakers early, but it seems to have flipped. Public looks to be on Minnesota now. Line moves up a half point. We're now looking at Minnesota minus one and a half. So let's go ahead and take a look at our spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Minnesota minus 3.58. So looking at a what? Two point lean on the T-Wolves. Check this out. Minnesota has played three games since they got their guys back. Since Towns and Edwards 
join the lineup and they have their full starting lineup. They played three games. Do you wanna hear what those three games are? First, they went into Golden State and beat the Warriors, one of the best home teams in the league. Then they went into Sacramento and beat the Kings, who at the time were one of the hottest teams in the league. Then they went into Phoenix and played the Suns with Kevin Durant and were tied late in the fourth quarter. Well, about midway through the fourth quarter. Played them tough as hell, should have won the game. This Timberwolves team is looking like it might be a problem fully healthy. I mean, look at that second unit. Nas Reed, Kyle Anderson, Jordan McLaughlin on the second unit. Yo, Nas Reed and Kyle Anderson, that 4-5, that would start. That would be the starting 4-5 on like 11 or 12 NBA teams. Now, let's give the Lakers some credit. They've been playing great, specifically on the defensive side. Um, outside shooting's developing as well. Uh, LeBron's listed as questionable, but I would imagine he plays. The Lakers can't afford to lose many more games. Here's the X factor for me in this one. The Lakers have really struggled to protect the basket. It's really their only defensive weakness because they have been playing good defense. But you got Edwards, Towns. You got guys that attack the rim. You got Gobert who dominates around the rim. Minnesota is fifth in shot frequency at the rim over the last three weeks. And they've only had their main two rim attackers uh edwards and towns for three games so this team might attack the rim at a higher rate than anyone else in the nba t wolves are coming for the basket i don't think the lakers are equipped to stop it definitely on minnesota here i'm laying the point in half i'm skipping both of the next two games you got spurs at warriors that's a 17 and a half point spread i would lean taking the points with the spurs can maybe the warriors take the foot off the pedal who knows um next is blazers kings again kings just beat them by 30 it's like a 15 point spread skipping them both next last game is nuggets at suns and hear me out so <laughs> Roto Wire has Nikola Jokic listed as out. Roto Grinders has Nikola Jokic listed as active in the starting lineup. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know if he's playing or not. Line is at eight and a half, which makes me believe he might not play. If Jokic plays, I'm down to take the eight and a half, but I really don't know, so I can't give out a bet yet. I will tweet something out later though when I know. If anything changes with any of these bets, I will let you know on Twitter. So give me a follow there if you're interested. Also, if you want the final ticket, which has my top bets, full ticket of every single bet I'm making for the night and parlay of the day, which have been hot, uh, head over to kyleterms.com or download the Sauce Network app. 13 NBA games. It sucks that there's not more value, but playoffs are right around the corner. Remember to bet responsibly and I will talk to you on Twitter.